back uh, for the Q&A session after uh, Sebastian's uh, presentation. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Fiona Law for your introduction. And I hope you can see my screen. So uh, let me first express my gratitude to uh, Professor Gina McCaddy, the director of the Center of Globalization and Culture, um, also my teacher and my MVA advisor in Hong Kong New College for her continued support and generosity in allowing me to have this prestigious platform to share my research progress. Uh, thanks to education, in particular her rigorous broad study course on feminism, Korean and post theories, which all fully inform my current presentation uh, and also my dissertation. So let me also thank Dr. Fiona Law, also my teacher, for an endorsement for this project a few years ago, encouraging me to work on this project instead of others. Without her very sensible advice, I might have ended up being stuck with a less interesting and promising project. So I thank both of you for keeping me on track and on your radar. Let me just begin our presentation. Um, my topic today is classic Chinese novels, contemporary China, transnational media and athletic network. This is very much a research in progress. So thanks for coming and thanks for being interested. I hope it will be at least interesting to you. And I will speak for about 35 to 40 minutes and I cannot present all the findings and uh, theories I'm thinking with. So if you have doubts and questions about certain things, uh, please do ask me in the Q&A session so I can uh, improve on the project. Right now, um, I would argue classic Chinese novels are literally alive and kicking and indeed happening, right? Um, for example, basically tomorrow, now this is not an advertisement, but there would be another free kingdom themed adaptation on show in Hong Kong and in mainland China. This is uh, Dynasty Warrior directed by Roy Chow. And it is a film that claims itself to be an adaptation from a hack and slash video action game of the same title, uh, which was a popular game, very popular, uh, first released around 20 years ago. One netizen on a popular website on bookman culture in mainland China, Dou Ban, finally commented, quote, this is a Chinese film adapted from a Japanese game adapted from a Chinese novel itself, adapted from history, okay. So what is the logic at work here? And does it make sense to talk about the original and, and when adaptations become adaptations and when the original novel is considered itself uh, derivative, how did all this happen and why in particular, uh, right? And, and more probably, right? Why in particular through the novel, Romance of the Free Kingdom that all this is happening? Shall we cancel the idea of adaptation and call them simply or free kingdom themed cultural products? To what extent is it productive to claim that for all these game adaptations, the novel remains the original? So what are these claims doing and why do we want to do that? Now, if we also consider the fact that contemporaneous with the film Dynasty Warrior, we have another game adaptation advertising itself very expensively and aggressively in the city at the moment. I suspect there's some kind of collaboration between the two, but I can't be sure. But on the left, you see posters and more precisely, right, the walls, right, the posters are not, they, 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 literally it becomes the walls itself, uh, wrapping the, the, the MPL station, being both the medium and also the message here. Uh, in MTL, you see the um, Chinese title of the game, uh, which is also, by the way, the Japanese title uh, of the game, Zhang uh, uh, in English, Records of the Three Kingdoms, which is not Romance of the Three Kingdom. Uh, I mean, Records of the Three Kingdom refers to the historical text written by Chen Shou, based on, based on which uh, Romance of the Three Kingdom is fictionalized, right? So uh, this is at least a view held by many. But by this point, you may agree, with me that all these titlings and namings, though they matter, matter not that much, considering the very conflation with each other through transmedia, transnational, and transhistorical adaptations. Past, present, fiction, and history. Could it be that great romance of the free kingdom is here becoming the infrastructure itself, allowing, luring, promising us, and asking us to pay for the game, and also the transit between past and present and across space. So what is the network here? Uh, as you can, as I said, on the left is Monka Station, on the right, you see all these words about a game in Hong Kong Station, which is next to Net Central. So if you are in Hong Kong and you know what Central is, then you know it is a financial center and, 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 and the heart of Hong Kong, according to some people, um, it's very much a place of money, of course, ambitions and making deals, business 
strategies and of course meant and brotherhood and, and of course empire. So the slogan here um, translated in English is we got guts, we got strategies and we are brothers, <laughs> we are brothers. So um, I kind of toxic I would say, but it is an abashed and unapologetic about his masculine uh, 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 ambitions here uh, being part of the game. You can also imagine how expensive it is to advertise an MTR and how much is expected to generate from this whole campaign and this whole platforming of the adaptation. So no surprise that this is a game, uh, this is very much a game that, um, that is developed by uh, Jack Ma's Alibaba, right? Um, so both games and cinema are, are here in town right now. Then you also have, for example, sorry, I don't know why, okay. Uh, you, you also have uh, Germaline <laughs> acting as the spokesperson for, 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 the, for, the, for the game, right? So basketball, NBA. Sorry, do I hear some noise? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, a basketball, uh, NBA pairing indeed here. He's performing and playing a game, Romance of the Three Kingdom. So sports and games, China, US. Taiwan, race, ethnicity, all these are for granted here as the issues of brotherhood. And you can see in the poster, right? Lind is in the midst of all this and it is with all these Chinese historical characters. Now, what kind of solidarity and alliance and effective never exists is created here. And which by the way, is what the novel is about. Alliance, strategies and victories and of course, failure. I wouldn't comment on the comments right below the YouTube video, but these are all, they're pretty negative, but these are all questions very much and never things that is very much trying to work. And it's not just about adaptation, right? But about playing and embodying uh, romance of the free kingdom, right? Through this the very body here uh, of Jeremy Lin. Both the film and game claim to have uh, been approved <laughs> proudly <laughs> by the Japanese game company Koei Tecmo Game, right? Yet, most players are from mainland China. Quite surprisingly to me uh, that there's not a single word on, of English uh, in the poster. Uh, and, and as you know, in Central, you know, even in, in some many restaurants, they provide menus, but only in English. So here, uh, it's not like, it's like don't even bother. Here, one user complains that there's no English as promised uh, in the in the, in iTunes. Uh, I mean, not iTunes in Apple, uh, which is interesting. Uh, by the way, this is the Hong Kong and Taiwan edition of the game uh, that we are talking about here, and there are different editions um, everywhere. All this is to highlight the problems, tensions, and play around the latest adaptation. This ongoing unfolding event of the free kingdom only highlights a predicament for someone who studies adaptation and media. How many adaptations do I have to cover? Right. As you can see on the screen, these are all games you can find on, uh, on, 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 on I think, um, yeah, on, on online platforms, apps about, uh, you know, themed around uh, romance of the free kingdom. My project therefore has to uh, follow not only the route, uh, the novel, which itself activates, contains, and also enables the roots of these adaptations, right? Ideally, I don't think my, uh, it, it should be limited to, to areas such as China or Japan, as seen in the case of the Free Kingdom, because as far as I know, the Dynastic Warrior is rumored to have been taken already by Netflix. This is complicated. Uh, more intriguingly, we should note that the novels and the adaptations, right, to different degrees are transhistorically, transnationally resonating with readers, viewers, players. And this transtemporal attachment to the novel across centuries, basically, no matter weak or strong, right, problematized ideas of contextualization, uh, periodization, right, all these labels, early modern, modern, contemporary, they're useful, but become very unstable when we have, a, we have, we have something that cross multiple mediums, such as games, uh, paintings, even the MTR station. So critics don't normally, right, non-academic also sometimes have thought a binary approach, like fidelity and fidelity, right, using this to either say or oh, judge a particular adaptation is good or bad because it is too close to the novel or because it's missing some key thing uh, that they think is key. So, so, so one way to go about this, uh, to counter this is to celebrate, right, to, to celebrate this kind of hybridization 
of postmodernization of classics uh, broadly. This is, um, I think, a dominant approach of studying adaptations as, as kind of some kind of cultural versions, uh, uh, mostly uh, informed uh, uh, by, by this idea of uh, Pedro Garcia. Uh, if you count also rewritings, right, and also drama adaptations uh, through the novel, uh, the list would be just very long across the century, and, and it wouldn't end. So you might need computing or big data or some digital archives to list them all out. But I think we are led to one option, but to return to the novels themselves, without which we wouldn't even be able to draw the network, right? whether the network is the signal is weak or strong. So like adaptations, uh, we may have to return to classics to gestures towards the future. We, here are some seminal monographs in the field on the left, classic Chinese novel, written by Zisha, which uh, reads these novels comparatively uh, with Western canons. And in the middle, the four master works of main novel by Andrew Parks, which I will come back to in my discussion on Children of Rap Chamber. Uh, and also in the middle uh, is this MLA uh, uh, volume uh, about uh, teaching the novel, right, which is uh, very much a, a, a question of, the, of adaptation because it's about transmission and democratization and pedagogy, right? Here, uh, and, and the last is Martin Huang's edited collection on uh, the phenomenon of rewritings in early modern China, basically in late imperial China. So there are many others on gender, religion, illustration, right? um, but much less on adaptations, that, which I focus on. Uh, most monographs on adaptations of classic Chinese novels so far devote themselves to Jane to the West. Uh, the, the ones on the left are the two uh, uh, examples. Um, though we may ask why, right? Uh, this I will come back uh, later, but more crucially for my project, I think there should be also dialogues with studies in Western and Anglophone canons, right? Issues of cultural capital, post-colonial classics, translation and cultural exchange. So we have Chinese Shakespeare written uh, by Alyssa Huang, uh, uh, and an American Japanese monkeys we, uh, are also here, of, of course, but also notable and comparable are these solid volumes on world cinema and Western canons. So what about Chinese literary canons? Are um, they also part of the world? Can we also work in seeing them connecting to the world? They're very world building capacity in visual culture and media. So instead of asking what we have done to the novel, I would ask what are classic Chinese novel doing and how are they performing on the world stage? So I'm trying another approach here, actually, which centered back to the specificity of and the formal aesthetic of the book that goes back to the idea of form. Uh, my project aims to trace and schematize a certain logic at work that cuts through literally all adaptations of a specific novel across medium. The question I have is, are these classical Chinese novels themselves the cultural forms of affected mediation? The case of the affective network as shown in classical Chinese novel uh, goes beyond, as I have shown, a Chinese media or even transnational Chinese, the, the rubric, right? Uh, uh, and many of these adaptation may not even be located right, within the prop, uh, rubric Chinese culture. But yes, I think it can be fairly located in the novels as, as materials, organizers, and affective carriers. With the impossible exclusion of Japan's dominant role in adapting, appropriating, and reassembling classic Chinese novels, and considering the transnationally concerted affective attachment to the novel, especially on um, the story of the Monkey King, right, in regions with diverse histories vis a vis colonialisms and empires, let's just say maybe Southeast Asia, Vietnam, but maybe Hong Kong, Taiwan, Korea, right. So I think that the constructed the constructionist bent of some of the post-colonial or even maybe Sinophone paradigm that accentuates center, periphery, or even questions of Chineseness, critique, and oppositionality, while pertinence may have to be supplemented and revised together with the intervention of other theory. For example, why some Chinese novels seem to travel and do better in transnational uh, 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 visibilities, right? Why some less? This asymmetric global attention to the novel as indicated through adaptation compelled us to look at novel themselves among which this already sent and periphery, right, on different scales. So I'm employed the conceptual tools, literary affordance and uh, affective network to flesh out the itineraries of the adaptation networks that remain, I think, uh, under theorized in existing scholarship. So the concept of affordance draw attention to classic Chinese novels materiality and texture vis-a-vis -vis representation, signification, and textuality. This concept, as uh, Caroline Levine puts it, right, borrowing it from design theory, illustrates the constraints, but also opportunities posed by the materials provided 
uh, organized and formatted by and through, if not originating in the classic novels for adaptations past and future. As she notes, quote, affordance is a term used to describe the potential uses or actions latent in materials and design. Glass affords transparency and brittleness, steel affords strength, smoothness, hardness, and durability. A fork affords stepping and scooping. A doorknob affords not only hardness and durability, but also turning, pushing, and pulling." End quote. So our question is, what are the affordance of classic Chinese novels? What makes romance of the free kingdom romance and what makes the free kingdoms the free kingdom? Very much an ontological question that preconditions representation and adaptation. In relation to affordance is the idea of affective network and assembly, focusing on affective theory, which focus on emotion, feeling, sensation, multi-sensory communication and so on, allowing us to pay attention not only to plots and content, but not to ignore sensory arrangement an effective component in the novel that you actually, and sometimes without knowing, knowing it, right? You see, hear, feel in all these multimedia adaptations. And I will come back to this point later in my uh, discussion on Dream the Red Chamber. With uh, Arfed, I think we can demonstrate a network analysis that would help us link not only the novel to adaptation, but also among adaptations themselves, instead of bounded by areas, cultures, contests. Important, but I want to talk about the glue, the affective glue provided and afforded by the source of materials. This only goes back to the example of the game and action cinema in Free Kingdom, right? Why are there so many game adaptations from the book? And why can it travel so far? And why didn't it happen to some other classic Chinese novels, right? Does its transnational reach relate to its formal avoidance and affective capacity? I would consider, for example, Romance of the Free Kingdom afford male heroism, visual and oral essays in histor historical epics and national cinema, and the correlated partner, which is hack and slash video games, uh, which is uh, Dynasty Warriors. Um, so um, here's John Woo's, okay, I don't have it here, but John Woo's is an adaptation of the Free Kingdom. And it was also a big hit in China, Korea, Japan, across East Asia, right, with casting also from uh, these regions. So uh, what is the investment there? So we pay attention to the non-meaning attractional components uh, here, I would say, of killing, uh, wars, conquest, uh, action on and off screen, sounds, lights, all these uh, special digital effects, right? That are not added to, but I think they're running parallel to the sensory uh, acceleration and spectacle as in the novel itself. Film theorist Vivian Subject speaks to this attention, right? And, he, and she argues that, quote, Hollywood historical epic is not so much the narrative accounting of specific historical events as it is the, uh, as it is the narrative construction of general historical eventfulness. So collective investment in romance of the free kingdom, right? The, the eventfulness draw people in. Her insights on the phenomenology of sensory immersion in the viewing of extravagant epics applies also to games and cinema, right? That is the freaking note. I would suggest uh, uh, we also look at literature, uh, the parallel phenomenon, right, in a novel, right, uh, which is uh, transmedial itself. If one tunes into the acoustic imagination in novel, as Paisley Kuhlman suggests in his book, Sound Rising from Paper, right, which, in which he invests the gaze the pleasure of use of onomatopoeia in martial arts a novel. So yes, here, this is the, the, the idea of literary affordance. All these basically meaningless description producing reality effects that, uh, that, that, that actually generates the effects of eventfulness in literature. Oh, here's one example I, uh, I got from the book, which is in which uh, he highlights all these uh, onomatopoeia, ten, 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 all these uh, sound uh, in, in, in novels, right? Due to time constraints, I wouldn't go into details with other novels, uh, but for Journey to the West, I simply want to highlight the fact that Dragon Ball uh, can be seen and I think should be seen as a continuation and adaptation of Journey to the West, though a very loose adaptation, but this looseness is exactly what mirrors the character, the novel, right? Uh, the monkey is himself who keeps changing and, and, and who uh, sometimes just lose himself. So the element of animation is very much already in the effective capacities of the novel. 
Through close reading of the novel, I hope it would reveal something effective that travels between the novel and adaptations and also the journey in, in the book, right? Like empire building and empire falling in Romance of Three Kingdoms mirror both novels, uh, transnational resonance and global radiance. The concept of a thought can also gesture towards explain, to explaining why, for example, the plum in a golden vase, Jinping Mei, being an erotic and still tabooed novel had a somewhat less visible afterlife on a national uh, and transnational scale. Here we see Li Hanxiang's uh, film adaptation and also a 3D porn version, uh, 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 which is the one on the left. Though indeed, um, you can also find in Korea where uh, this legendary director, King ki uh, legendary director of uh, of the film, The Housemaid, which is often voted as the best Korean film by Koreans, um, actually also had a movie, uh, he also had a movie adapted from uh, Jim Hen Pei, right? And, and in Park chan uh The Handmaiden, which is very much uh, uh, inspired by The Housemaid, uh, there's this long session of the character reciting basically from uh, the book, uh, from Jim Hen Pei, from the, from the golden, uh, the plumbing in the golden vase. So this is, um, but but just compared with you know romance of the free kingdom then you know this is a little bit different here interesting okay another one uh by actually also a leftist uh famously leftist uh director uh, in, in Japan, Koji Wakamatsu, uh, he also made one uh, adaptation of, uh, of, of Jinping Mei, right? But uh, the only DVD, DVD available uh, is, is, is in English, and, and I, I don't have it right now, uh, but I, 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 according to the sources I read, this, the, the film is in English. <laughs> so um, I, I need to find out how that happened. And um, interestingly, right, water margins right, shared the obsession with brotherhood in Free Kingdom. Yet, instead of wars and empires, it contemplates revolt and co-optation, and also a book uh, about men and saturated with excessive violence. Uh, but it, as, 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 she, as, as you can see in the book, uh, Hepburn's book, The Japanese Discovery of Chinese Fiction, right, making of a national canon, it is actually a major work in Japanese literary and pop culture. Lastly, I would turn to a more uh, and elaborate uh, uh, on a case of uh, Dream of the Red Chamber, right? Uh, and, and talk about the fortunes and its affective network, which I take to be queer uh, stardom. And uh, while I mentioned Free Kingdoms Network as a game, one must admit uh, Dream of the Red Chamber's afterlife is somewhat interior and in something interiorized because it's always domestic, very much a book. Like, like many people describe it as a very Chinese book, it's about, about a Chinese feeling, it represents Chinese emotion, culture, civilization. So these are all the claims you can find in all the critics. I'm not sure if this explanation stands, but the architecture of the novel, the grand view garden where the story happens, may have limited its transnational reach, which of course um, is not necessary. Uh, it's not necessarily a good thing, but for Red Chamber, the effective network can be I think more carefully described as, uh, as an assembly, that of gathering of people and ultimately dispersal. So this indeed applies to other novels, but here uh, it is distinctive here in gender red, red chamber. It has a specific texture, uh, which distinguishes it from masculine genres in uh, Free Kingdom and Water Margin. So uh, we we'll only introduce the story, but the ending here uh, with the protagonist Jabba, you live in the world in his home. I postulate that it's a book about basically diaspora as the family disintegrates and kinship renounced. Adaptations allowed characters and people to gather and disperse. In his study of Hong Lao Meng, uh, with the dream of the Red Chamber sequels, Keith and Mayan caution against dismissal of these uh, rewritings, suggesting we see writings and parent novels as a composite whole, right? Uh, which involves, quote, about standing the eternal presence of the charm of favorite aspects of Hong Lao Meng. Right. This is very close to what I would like to call effective assembly, as he proposed Arthur, internal charm here as an element, an agency in formations of the alliance between the novel and the writing. His idea of the charm of the novel as eternal presence also disrupts the binary of before and after, which played some approach of uh, adaptation studies. Yet my use of um, effective assembly, right, uh, does not deny, but kind of de-emphasize nostalgia, right? Assembly, is fundamentally repetitive, infrastructural, uh, carry sense, but not strict adherence of schedule. Right? They can, it can also be quite banal, yet promising surprises. Uh, 
Paradoxically, nostalgia does not connote this sense of regularity and unpredictability and movements between poles. I want to cite one couplet uh, in chapter five, which it, it, it is a simple one, but simply to talk about to, to theorize a fetish assembly versus uh, nostalgia. Uh, in chapter five, we see Jia Bao, you enter the land of illusion in the threshold, as, and he sees this poem, and let me read the first line. Asian herb and sky, marvel that love's passion should outlast all time. Literally, um, is a very much about book about emotion, qin in Chinese, and this endlessly flowing through the past and the present. This is already in theorized, actually, in the novel, right? There, there's no sense of returning to the past, but the agency of the emotion itself would travel across time. Assembly includes banquets, poetry clubs, festivals, opera watching, birthday parties. These all happen in Dream of the Red Chamber, if you read it and you know it, the term assembly is an umbrella term to describe all kinds of assemblies, right? In the, as in the dictionary, is a, it is also a key term denoting people gathering for social transformation, activism. It cannot be about legislation, protest, but it can be as banal as a school assembly. So my use of the term assembly maintains all these ambiguous connotations of people gathering together. People assemble regularly, people meet for some purpose, but the content and outcome of the meeting is not ensured and clear. Um, just think about, you know, in a love gathering, you just don't know what we're doing. And Going back to the novel, uh, okay, these are some images, uh, as, as you can see in the adaptations of people gathering, eating. In, in going back to the novel, right, Chinese literature, literary scholar, right, Andrew Plaz, uh, in his book, uh, I think was already doing some sort of effective analysis, right, in which he comes up with a term called complementary bipolarity, which is very close to yin, I think, uh, uh, to, to describe what he calls the dense texture of the book. The texture here being, quote, perceptual and conceptual qualities that I highlighted on the on the left. All these polarities, right, are ceaselessly alternate from pole to pole. There's presence within absence, joy within sadness. There's union in separation and separation in union. That kind of uh, 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 bipolarity that he mentioned, right? He's using this to describe the texture of the novel. Uh, so. So things just alternate, and again and again, there's no final destination and no higher synthesis, and it's cyclical. This is what I meant by my use of assembly, again and again, and it might include, but it's not reducible to nostalgia. Here, I argue effective assembly in the novel already captures all these mutually complicated pairs. People come and go, there's funeral, birthday party in the book, but you know, this is ultimately, um, I think can be can be can be sensed uh, through the idea of uh, uh, effective uh, assembly. Go back to contemporary times, right? Uh, the contemporary theories on assembly, I think, also actually echo very, very, uh, very, very much with a uh, class quote, um, and and it definitely also applies to the novel, right? In Butler's book on um, Nobs to Us, a performative theory of assembly. Uh, I would like to just read the quotes and, 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 and yeah, quote, um, embodied actions of various kinds signified in ways that are strictly speaking, neither discursive nor pre-discursive. In other words, forms of assembly already uh, uh, signify prior to and apart from any particular demands they make. Silent gatherings, including visuals or funerals, often signify in excess of any particular written vocalized account of what they are about. Gatherings are necessarily transient, and that transience do not last. And, 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 and that transience is linked to the critical function. One could say, but oh, they do not last, and sink into a sense of futility. But that sense of loss is countered by the antip anticipation of what may be coming. They could happen at any time. So effective assembly is more about the form and rhythm of gathering, and it is this effective component that matters and not exactly the content. So let me be clear, there's content, um, but I, I suggest we can talk about adaptations as effective assemblies as in Butler's theorization, right? Which brings in the elements of embodiment and embodies. If Free Kingdom is about games and wars, journey to the West about animations and animals, now I would end by turning to a case study of effective assembly that focus on star. In 
2006 in China, a talent show was organized to recruit actors and actresses for a TV adaptation of the novel Dream of the Red Chamber. And the show was called Dreamers in the Red Chamber. Here are some pictures. The contestants had to compete in 10 zones, uh, as seen in the picture. Uh, this is, uh, the photo is, uh, is in an early stage, but later really, there's only nine here, but they rezone it. And, and geographically, most interestingly, of course, as you can see, uh, Taiwan is one of the zones. And according to the archival website that I saw, um, they actually very much welcome and they, they advertise as an overseas uh, uh, competition um, in which uh, overseas candidates compete. Um, some sources say Shenzhen, but some sources say Taiwan. Um, so contestants compete for roles of major characters here, uh, the female contestants, uh, and highlighted below the photos are uh, the origin, the provincial. Uh, regions, right? The regional identities are highlighted actually under the photos. And to link it back to the novel, right? Only people, uh, people only compete for major character, right? And as seen in this, this is that Dai Yu and Bao Chai are the major characters in, in the book, uh, the, the lovers of uh, Jia Bao Yu, right? Uh, so people only uh, compete for major characters uh, in, in, in the show. Actually, there's, there's, there's some others, but basically it, it wouldn't be 100, more than hundreds of characters being, being, being open for competition. Right? So stardom here, as I would say, is conflated with the protagonist in the novel. I would just add uh, that the affect of stardom right, is one and only, and also one among many. So side cast secondary characters, they're just helping star to shine as uh, only one person can can be the star and only one protagonist. So here I'm quoting from Alice Wallace's book, um, quote, any character can be a protagonist, but only one character is. The asymmetric structure of realist characterization, which runs out one or several characters while flattening and distorting a manifold assortment of characters reflects actual structures of inequitable distribution. In the end, however, the winning contestants actually didn't make it to the show. Um, uh, actually, one did, but it was not even the role uh, she actually uh, applied to, right? So um, the director of, the th of, of this adaptation, right, basically, according to sources I read, uh, she's not satisfied with all the candidates, so she chose her own uh, uh, you know, uh, actress because uh, she finds no you know, all, all the actors can is no idea. Okay. So uh, Li Xiaohong is very much a, a big figure, uh, a fifth generation woman director that is famous uh, for, for her uh, very feminist uh, female centered work. And okay, so my question is um, what is the role of global diaspora, right, in this show, in this dream? And then a case study I deal with uh, is the so-called Dream of the Red Chamber War in late 1970s. And the theater of this gathering is in uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Southeast Asia, and also actually include uh, both Joseph and China. So here you see seven Dream of the Red Chamber film adaptations. Long story cut shots, they are competing in the same year for screen space and box offers producing what the director Li Hanshan in his memoir called the Red Chamber War. This is an interesting case of assembly where, um, you know, using a dream of the Red Chamber uh, is often considered as a book of feelings, affects, grieving, mourning, about love. But here is about competition and business, and about sensation making, creating noise. So not all gathering are peaceful, right? Uh, and and Plaque remind us right, with this idea of bipolar, uh, complementarity, right? And here's one front page advertisement of one of the adaptations of, of uh, which is a TV show. And on the same day, you uh, actually also see, uh, it, it's actually quite rare to see this, like on the front page, asking people to watch this 100 episode uh, TV adaptation of The Dream of the Red Chamber. And this is very much uh, like happening in Hong Kong. And under this, uh, uh, Red Chamber thing, you know, all these <laughs> global brands, which I don't think I can name, I don't know, but Sony, all these global names, HSBC, they're just framed in this kind of, I don't know, let's say it's a traditional Chinese style framing, right? So this is quite interesting. And on the same day, actually, in the same paper, 
you see advertisements of adaptation, right? The, on the right is Li Hanshan's adaptation featuring Lin Qingxia, Rui Lin, and also director, uh, on the, also Sylvia Chang on the right. On the left, uh, actually, is a year opera adaptation that was shot in 1962 and not 77, but, but it was re released uh, on, in that year by a left wing film company in Hong Kong, just because there's this kind of fuzz about Dream of the Red Chamber. And, 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 and also uh, because uh, according to Li Han Shang, right, there was the, the fall of the Gan of Four and all these operas, uh, traditional operas can come out again. And so it was re-released and actually it was quite popular uh, uh, in, 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 in its re-release. And all these films are competing uh, 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 together in the same year. I'm not even mentioning here uh, one adaptation in the same year, uh, which was shot in uh, Singapore. Uh, but then it didn't do very well and it was not picked up by anybody to screen it anywhere else and also could not find any uh, footage of the film. But this is actually from uh, a, a very famous screenwriter, Chiu Kang Tian, and who actually wrote scripts for all these Chinese film classics. And he did make an adaptation of Dream of the Red Chamber, which is a, a modern costume uh, version using only Singaporean local young actors, but it didn't do well. So finally, I'm ending um, with uh, by showing you a list of um, queer performances and and, 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 and and stars related to the Red Chamber. The character Jia Baoyu has always been played by stars. Famous actresses or, or actors or star to be is also a star making process. So people who had potential to be a star would also be chosen to play Jia Baoyu or actors who want to become stars, right? Will fight for this opportunity to play the characters. Here, uh, please look at some images about the protagonists from different adaptations, because people often compare adaptations, not only with the novel, sorry, but also among adaptations themselves. And casting is one very crucial thing that they, they talk about, especially in terms of, uh, in, in the case of the Red Chamber. So the first example is Yu Lan, a year opera performer in uh, 1962. Uh, Lin Qingxia, Rupert Lin in 1977, born in Taiwan. Leslie Jeune in 1977. Uh, he actually, this is his debut film, but he hated the film. Uh, but he's, I saw in the newspaper that he wanted to play in a film because he wanted to be a lead. And also uh, Denise Ho in 2010, right? Born in Hong Kong, also a Canadian uh, and also a lesbian out of the closet. Uh, the director of the play, Edward Lamb, actually uh, also directed many theoretical adaptations. Uh, of Chinese classes, which involve cross-dressing and also using male to perform character, uh, to perform female character and vice versa. So the most recent case uh, is this um, play by Asian American playwright, David Henry Huang. Um, so this play was, uh, according to the website, called Commissioned by San Francisco Opera and premiered there in 2016. Also directed by Stan Lai, actually, uh, again, uh, born in America, but affiliated to Taiwan, and also Bright Shun, all Americans, but affiliated to different parts of, uh, of, of Asia. So this is also a co-production, right, with the Hong Kong Arts Festival, which presented the work in spring 2017, prior to a full tour of mainland China. So it did return, um, according to, is the word they used, returning to China. So what is, um, diaspora here. And when you're talking about tour between places, now, now this, this image of airplane really reminds me of the MTRL at the very beginning of, the, of my presentation, right? It's Dream of the Red Chamber, uh, 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 some kind of infrastructure. And what kind of effective assembly, like what kind of dream is it generating? Closing with a supposedly Asian American adaptation, I'd like to end with one great example of cultural criticism, which I've been trying very hard to emulate and trying to achieve in this presentation and dissertation, which is to trace global connections, simply describing the global connection and how to do make sense of it is nothing easy, right? Uh, in connection to uh, citing and world in China, so as shown in Gina's work, I think we must think about classic Chinese novels through worldly concerns and world cinema. And the lens of world cinema is very much opposite here through adaptations, critically yet also effectively. 
Adaptations of classic Chinese novels speak beyond themselves and we must trace how they have sit into the very place where you do not see them at all. And this is very much a building project needed. So I've uh, finished my presentation. So uh, please, uh, if you have any questions and, 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 and uh, doubts, which I'm sure there are many, so uh, please um, let me know. Yes. Thank you, Sebastian. So let's give him a virtual applause for his really exciting presentation on a very rich uh, scope of work, okay, networking, making assemblies on the varieties of transmedia adaptations of the four classic Chinese novels. So um, we have around uh, 20 minutes, okay, for the Q&A session. So uh, right now, uh, please feel free to type your question uh, in your chat box, or if you want to uh, voice out, okay, um, you may um, raise your hand and then unmute yourself, introduce yourself, and then um, ask your questions. So do you have any, maybe we need a moment to, well, uh, formulate and digest um, the materials, but before everyone, okay, post the questions, I'll just take the advantage of asking the very first question to you, as, um, Sebastian. So um, I'm very much excited by the way in which you um, introduce and explore all these uh, varieties of work, okay, uh, referring to the classic Chinese novels, and you use the terms like um, effective networking and effective assembly to um, to sort of uh, link up all the uh, relationships, uh, diasporic or um, transnational relationships among the worst. I'm just wondering about, well, I, because as far as I understand, like networking is a kind of different uh, understanding, different concept from assembly. So one is more like mm -hmm. exploring, reaching out of making that work, like mapping out, okay, all these um, elements and, 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 and works and texts, while assembly is more like um, meeting together. So how would you um, elaborate on the kind, the way in which all these uh, different works, making assemblies or networking, or do they uh, network and assembly at the same time? Right. Uh, should I spotlight myself while I'm talking? Uh, right. Okay. And I because I didn't okay know how to do this. Okay. So yes. Um. I think that I think I'm kind of using both terms interchangeably. But assembly is definitely focusing more on the uh, on the idea of people gathering in that. Of course, network. Um. It sounds like a, you just think of electronics and 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 wires and that kind of stuff. But of course, there's also networking <laughs> in gathering. So 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 very much. Uh, the idea uh, is that uh, in assembly, uh, uh, you 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 just gather and disperse, and there's some kind of regularity in it. And in 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 in, in network, um, there, there's there's there's. The network would just sometimes close, and it sometimes would just work, right? Like, 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 like your internet connection or that kind of stuff. So, in a way, they, they, I, I use them to, to, to talk about almost the same kind of thing. Uh, 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 yes, instead of having this idea of adaptation, which is crucial, but then it. It is. It sounds very passive, and 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 and, and in all the conflation of all these, uh, all these things that I have tried to show, um, you know, you even even don't even know how to deny, you know, whether the, the film Dynastic Warrior is a, is a, is an adaptation of the game. Why can't you say it is a adaptation of, of of the novel? But that's just how they. Uh, Rhetorically, uh, 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 it, it is it is it is it is marketed this way, and maybe it is even understood this way because maybe they think, uh, and as I said, as I show, um, they probably they, actually I think they obtain copyrights uh, from the Japanese company actually, right? But of course, um, I doubt if the Japanese companies making making the game need to obtain copyrights from China or, or where, who, who, because you don't know, uh, I mean, the offer, I mean, you know, but anyway, it, it was, it was not uh, exactly the, the same issue, right? So I hope I kind of um, yeah. answer your question. Do we have any questions from the floor? Okay. Yeah, we do have, um, yeah, we have a question from Gina, okay, from the chat room. So let me just read out um, uh, comments and questions. So she said that, thank you for this fascinating talk. So you delve into the cross-dressing tradition of the dream of the Red Chamber. And uh, she wonders if you can plan to take up a similar perspective involving queer readings of other classics, such as the Three Kingdoms. So do right. these queer dimensions of the text travel 
um, differently across national borders as well as media. Actually, I would like to add on to this questions about this um, performance of queerness, because at the end of your presentation, you also talk about um, uh, Edward Lamb's uh, stage performance, okay, stage adaptations of the uh, of the novels uh, and emphasizing on time for daily performance and queerness. I'm just also wondering about how you would also deal with these texts as well. Please. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, uh, this is this is one thing that I'm kind of struggling with uh, in, in, in ideas about genre, because for the game, basically, like everybody can play the game as long as they enjoy it. It's not like only male, though, though in the advertisement, they are really just targeting males. This is quite um, strange for me because I don't think it was the case in, in, in other adaptations, uh, especially game adaptations. And According to what I, uh, I to what I read, uh, the game Dynasty Warrior is actually more popular among women than uh, the strategic games, right? But but this is again I I haven't really dug deep into this, but 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 yes, uh, there's homosexual uh, and homosocial read uh, like the relation between the men there, but um, it it very much depends on whether you see really a queer adaptation of it and whether it would it would be successful, whether it would resonate. And, and, it, and, and of course, uh, Ever Lamb did that uh, with all the classics. Um, but sadly, this is a, 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 I mean, there's no DVD of, the, of that kind of uh, a performance, but, 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 but that, that one uh, is even using a, like, 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 like a, a male character, a male person by right, playing a female character. So, so that one is, is complicated. And, and for other classics, um, yes, I think definitely one can do it. But but what I was trying to do was to first lay out what I mean. The same uh, the task was for me, I guess, was to just lay lay out the uh, the, the, the the basic thing that connects everything. Uh, uh, ideally, ideally, because they must be related to the book. Uh, it's kind of tautological because of course the adaptations they can themselves have adaptations. They must be related to the book. It's just a matter of Degrees of uh, let's say fidelity or, or degrees of uh, 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 you know uh, you know correspondence, uh, uh, but 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 there must be something, and and that really you find, uh, and and indeed uh, there there you can use especially in dynasty warriors, you can, there, there's a female uh, uh, avatars um, uh, in in the, in the games as well, but I'm not even sure if those who use the female avatars would be female, right? It, it, it is very complicated. That's the very trans. Uh, you know about the about this the gaming right male playing like as a female female avatar or maybe maybe you may a trans person as well you can I, I may identify with with warrior right uh, uh, that's totally hyper masculine that that's also possible so yes I I, I yeah I, I really struggle with that kind of question but um uh, in terms of uh, laying the the I would say I don't know. I, I guess I'm trying to do the the first step, which is to 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 talk about genre, right? right, right because uh, you, you can't deviate from the genre uh, uh, too much. If you too if you deviating from it too much, then you, you're just not there in in the genre. So so yes, um, that, that I hope I answered the question. But yes. Thank you, Sebastian. So we have another question from the chat uh, from one of our audience. Um, so the sure uh, is a email address. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, or do you prefer me reading that out for you? Perhaps I'll just read it out. Okay. So so thanks for the talk. Okay. So um, audience is is curious as to how you are thinking about canon formation. So the grouping of uh, classic Chinese novels wasn't a natural or self evident grouping, but the product of very conscious choices by scholars or critics like um, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, from Lysa and also uh, Piaz. Uh, so, so you make this case that there is something inherent in a text that lends itself to a broad popularity across place and time. So how are you accounting for the role of the institutions and individuals working outside the text in constructing canons, please? Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. I. I think. Yes. I. I would. Yeah. I think that that is uh, a, a, another question that I always think about. And and just. Uh, so I, I think just to look at the case of uh, uh, Jinping made the, the palm in a golden vase, which which was actually considered at some point um, by 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 critic as as a, as a major work of literature, but then it was also uh, kind of banned, I, like 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 even uh, within China. But of course it circulated, but it was not 
that publicized, it, people just don't call it because it's because it's a pornographic novel, right? So indeed, within all these canons, there are already, I think, some maybe counter canons or maybe they 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 their seats in the canon are not very stable actually, uh, and and in my fall, uh, 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 and and some might get criticized for 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 being. Um, for being, let's say, uh, not revolutionary enough uh, in, in in some in maybe in social in the social area, basically, uh, yes. So so the, I, I mean yes, there's institution, uh, but what is interesting is you know if you're talking about a book being adapted for so many centuries and in many places and 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 even 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 back even in last year there was also an adaptation of uh, you know a free kingdom in in japan so yes there's an institution but it's hardly a single institution that that can determine all this and 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 of course there's the marketability uh, like like whether people are interested in it and, and so uh, this is very much a, a, again a, a audience thing like like whether whether people are still attached to it and it, it's, this can be tested by for example the boss office right like if it doesn't do well then they just don't make it right so so in in a way uh, yes there are institutions trying to push this uh, ahead push this uh, to the front but then the the crowds uh, basically, just like in a singing contest or star contest, it's like I can trash all of them. <laughs> I can, as an audience, I just want to trash this this candidate, and the other is bad. Okay, I, I mean, I mean, there's there's the power of, of, of the anonymous and and the crowd uh, in 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 all that, and 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 basically, um, there are also reviews, complaints about the games, right? That I I just showed, right? There's no English translation, and somebody just made a complaint on the platform. And and yes, and 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 all of these uh, are making an impact. And 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 institutions such as Alibaba was of course trying to push this. And 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 whether they succeed sometimes really depends on you know whether people take it, take it like take it favorably, right? Thank you, Sebastian. I, I would just like to add on to this questions about uh, I was um, kind of interested in the TV show. I mean, related to um, the the dream of the Red Chamber in, in mainland China, with people like um, competing to be main characters in in right, novel. Right, right. Yeah, I'm just like to know more about that uh, show or that competition or or. or relating to your discussions about institutionalization or how actually this kind of TV show would possibly or potentially uh, decanonize or further canonize the text. Right, right, right. Yes, uh, the show, um... Yeah, the show uh, was very interesting. I actually didn't know about the show until I really researched on it, and it was quite big. The, the people, the People's Daily report on it, all major uh, 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 newspaper platforms. So, uh, so, uh, so who and 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 Sina and all these, they they had they had a whole page of uh, uh, reported reports about uh, following up on this whole show, right? And, and 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 then all these stars, they have a blog, and then people can kind of use SMS to to kind of vote though. In the end, it really was just a show, uh, being a show. So, 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 um, yeah. Your question is about yes, and 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 the reception of the TV adaptation was also very bad, which is uh, directed by Li Xiaohong, because um, people just talk about everything from casting, from the from from the fact that you know this is like a the show, like the, the contest was a was kind of deceptive, and then they don't they 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 don't like some of the casting. They think uh, it is even some kind of corruption that uh, all like behind that, and 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 um, and yes, uh, it is it, it could be kind of productive in that way because you know everybody trashed uh, that that adaptation and and they compare it to the to the one they did in nineteen. Uh, X7, which uh, many uh, people in mainland China consider as a classic, and and so um, yes, there's all these versions competing, and 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 and, and people ranking, evaluating, um, which ultimately really centers, I think, the the book uh, itself. So um, yes, in that sense, I think whatever kind of marketing campaign, let's just say that the MTR post. Advertisement, right? Whatever those are, I I would say, uh, in a way, I I would really think that it, it is just adding something to 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 the canon rather than critiquing it. Uh, even though the, the, because the critique of it is is really uh, uh, all about the 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 ideal the ideal uh, adaptation that they think about and also the ideal uh, book that they are thinking in their mind. So yes, I think I think yeah, all these things they they kind of just add 
add things back to the to the canon formation, which mm, are not necessarily yeah counter countering its own canon status. I, I don't think it, it is doing that. Yes. Thank you. Do we have uh, questions from the floor or more comments or additional remarks about um, all these examples? Yeah, Gina has another similar questions about the theme parks in the mainland devoted to these classics. So the park that takes up the dream of the Red Chamber is particularly popular. So she wonders if the partic participatory experience can be compared to the video game participation. So she also we, uh, would like to really like your remark on Butler and Assembly and would like to know more about this, please. Okay, yes, the theme park uh, was very much uh, Yes, I, I think it is all about, it, 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 is, it is basically, I, I seem to be talking about a lot of different causes, but it's all about the body, uh, really, let's say cosplay, right? People cosplaying as characters, that, that itself would, would tell you something about, about the story, about the novel, and, and the theme park, um, yes, uh, um, yeah, the theme park is definitely, uh, uh, and, and, and the point, the problem is, it, I don't know whether the theme parks are doing uh, very, very well. Uh, uh, and, and maybe if you're talking about the state pushing this uh, forward, um, I think it might, they might have a, have, a, have a role to do that uh, uh, if handled really um, skillfully and expertly and, and so that people really go to the parks and, and just have fun and then um, Instagramming and, and posting and maybe it would just become really a thing, right? The problem is uh, whether the effect would would, 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 would would actually tell you something about also the the production and 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 so about the assembly um, this is very much a story about conflation of the star and character uh, which uh, is especially required uh, uh, and, and, and very uh, emotionally charged even for the case of dream of the red chamber because there's all these fan avid, avid uh, uh, fandom uh, surrounding the book. Uh, uh, there are also fandoms surrounding other books like, 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 like the Journey to the West, of course, um, not necessarily just children, but okay, this is again a genre question, right? A, a lot of children books about Journey to the West and then a lot of games about, uh, about Romance of the Free Kingdom. So, 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 so yes, but this is particularly charged in in, in Red, Dream of Red Champ because uh, the the casting issue is is very important in all these uh, commentaries and, and 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 film critics that I've read uh, I read right they they're all either trashing the other and and praising one one actor and, and trashing the others and 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 so uh, the conflation uh, uh, is very much uh, 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 what what people care about and 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 so in the case of assembly. Um, uh, yes, uh, the stars uh, will open concerts, and 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 they themselves, uh, like like Les Legion later became a, a giant, uh, a, 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 a mega star in Asia, just by having a debut film in Jim the Red Chamber. Though the film was trashed, but it was, I think there was something mysterious about about about, about this idea of him playing the role. But then um, later also came out uh, coming out as queer, but then. Zhao Dao, you the, the the character is very queer, uh, if you know about so so and, and Denise Ho is definitely also one one issue and 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 yeah. Thank you, Sebastian. So um, yes, I was listening to your um, uh, I mean all these uh, 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 clarification. I was just wondering, like it seems to me that um, there is a very interesting uh, contrastive uh, reception, like uh, of all these adaptations, like those of. Uh, uh, outside of, I mean, uh, those among the diasporic uh, Chinese communities has a very different reception of all these adaptations as compared to uh, those uh, from mainland China, uh, those uh, contemporary cases. So do you observe any patterns or any reasons relating to why or what contributes to this kind of um, differences in perception, anything to do with diaspora or anything? Right, right, right. Yes, um, this goes back to the idea of affordance, which I kind of borrow from the from the from the fearless uh, literary critic Caroline, uh, 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 the thing. And and 
And and yes, it's very much, I don't know whether this is an explanation, but yes, this is just like a game, Romance of the Three Kingdom, yes, let's win, oh, let's learn how to deceive the others. And, and, there, and there's all these books about the business tricks, uh, the tricks you can learn from uh, Romance of the Three Kingdom, which is a very big thing in especially Japan. And and also uh, and the children thing and and yes the journey to the journey to the west is um, first of all just talk about the book is itself about traveling about journeying about transforming right full of animating uh, uh, capacities so I I I would I would very confident in say that there's something really about the book's popularity which goes back to the book uh, and and here yeah it seems like institution has disappeared which. Which is a question that I have because I can't think of any particular institution behind, like, like pushing, you know, this book or whatever, right? It, it goes to Asia and America with Nassim Hong Kingston or even Timothy Moe writing books based on the, the myth and not necessarily the, the novel, right? Because, because before the novel uh, uh, came into being, there were already these folklores of, of the Monkey King. And and, the, and it's also about traveling between India and and, and, and China. So so yes, uh, and and in Red the Dream of Red Chamber, I I'm just just kind of speculating, but right? because the book is uh, is over invested by a lot of Chinese literaries who think the book really oh my God there's this um, loss of a world, uh, loss of the ideal world of of, of of these people writing poetry, uh, uh, being very gentle to to each other, right? When when in when actually uh, it, 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 it's just so fragile and will just collapse uh, because because it's just very much an idealized and ideal world, and and that's very. There's something quite interior uh, or interiorizing about the book's reception and also the critics. So, so, and and I'm not sure. And also, there's some, some people describe it as very Chinese, uh, which is a very problematic claim, claim. But all these Chinese poetries, which don't always translate very well, and of course, there are poetry in all books. But this one, uh, 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 Dream of Red is particularly famous for 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 being poetic. And and they are basically poetry poetry clubs in a book where these characters they just critique each other's poetry. <laughs> so 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 I don't know uh, it. Compared to action, compared to uh, 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 cute characters, monkey, or uh, uh, going here and there, being very loose himself, uh, uh, and and so yes, maybe there's something really going back to the like the novel, which kind of mm, uh, not determining, but it plays a role in in generating the the world connection and different worlding capacities of the books. Yeah, thank you. So we have, uh, so time is, well, time flies. So we have a final uh, comment, okay, from the chat, uh, from Maggie, okay, from Hong Kong Studies. So she has two thoughts inspired by your wonderful work, okay, to share. So there are two points. So first is the proposal of Chinese literary classics as an effective uh, infrastructure provides a very useful method for the study of Sinophone cultural productions. And uh, the second um, point is in the dispute over the sovereignty of uh, Daoyu Islands in uh, 2010s. Uh, the slogan Daoyu Islands belong to China, uh, oh, Chong Zhang Hong, okay, belongs to the world, was seen in many public assemblies of patriotic Chinese citizens. So the global effective assemblies inspired by these works seem to echo the slogan in a very funny way by suggesting that these Chinese classics belong to the world. So do you have any final comments to the remarks? Sebastian? Yeah, uh, yes, I mean, speaking of ocean, so yes, I, I just uh, talk about the, uh, I don't know whether uh, like people have been reading about a book, but if you look at the land of illusion, the chapter five of the book, which is actually mistranslated because it is Tai Xu Huan Jin. There's no land uh, uh, in in the Chinese translation. It's about uh, landscape or maybe even sovereignty or, or, or some sort of a uh, 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 rim, right? But it's not a land. And if you look carefully um, of the all these uh, uh, poetries about women's uh, uh, the women characters fate. It's very much there, there's a lot of ocean uh, there, like people leaving, uh, uh, and also about the, the the quote that I had, I think uh, about emotion and and about sky and the, and then also about the sea, right? It is very much very there's something something very hidden but global there, uh, which is kind of not really about the land and. And even though the land is there, but it's very much about the, the, the maybe they have something equal about it, like 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 the, the the idea of the sky, and 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 the emotions soaring through that, and and also the sea. So so 
yes, the sea and the land, uh, uh, and also very much about the book is about water, uh, uh, which is uh, about tears. And 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 Zhao Baoyu says, women are like water, men are like mud. So yes, that's that's just what I want to add on the idea of the sovereignty and and in versus uh, the sea and the ocean. Yes. So thank you, Sebastian. Do we have any final final comments or questions from the floor? So if no, then let us give um, Sebastian a round virtual applause um, for his wonderful sharing and uh, explaining how the, the effective uh, mediation within the text mediates through the effective assembly, okay, across global <laughs> regions, okay. So <laughs> thank you so much. And actually, okay. I do look forward to uh, reading your work in very, very soon future. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And have a good night. And thank you for your uh, suggestions. And I look forward to talking to you later. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. And have a good evening.